Samantha from Scrapmasters Paradise and welcome to another Learning Copics with Marker Pop video. Today I'm going to use this cute stamp from the Greeting Farm. It's Up Up Bean. I went ahead and stuck it to my acrylic block here and I'm going to stamp it with Memento Tuxedo Black. I'm just going to talk about some stamping basics when you're using Copics. When stamping to color with Copics, I always use Memento ink. Memento ink does not streak when you're using your stamps. So I'm just going to use this ink. And what I like to do is I like to hold the big stamp down and then press my ink over it. And this way I can make sure everything's covered and I can see clearly when it's all covered. And then when you're stamping down, you just have to stamp straight down. Try not to wiggle your stamp at all. And then just press really nicely. And then you get a good impression. If there's any area that doesn't show up, let's say there's a little gap and the line doesn't show up all the way, you can use a Copic Multi-Liner, and this is just one I have. It's a black one, and it's 0.3. Um, and then you could just fill in that little space with the black Copic Multi-Liner. These Copic Multi-Liner inks will not react with the Copics either, so it's really nice to be able to fill in any sort of gap so you don't waste this whole giant piece of paper if one little bit doesn't show up. If you want to doodle or draw your own images, the Copic Multiliners are perfect for that. You can draw with them and then color it in with your Copics. I just wanted to cover a couple of tips today before we get started on our real lesson. And our real lesson today is we're going to work on some hair. In our last lesson, we talked about the flicking technique and we're going to apply that same technique and color in the hair here. I'm just going to use two colors for this. I've got E57 and E59. They're in the same blending family because they both start with E and 5. And then the E59 is darker because the number is lower. So I'm going to use these two. And when I do hair, I try to make kind of a halo shape across the head. And since she's wearing a hat, most of the hair is covered up. But you can still do kind of a halo effect right around her head still in that rounded shape and what I mean by halo is there's just going to be a lighter part in that middle section and same with the hair around her you can just make the lighter section down the middle of the hair and of course the hair closest to her head and neck is going to be blocked by her head and neck so that part will also be darker and with this I'm going to be doing all flicking and I don't want to do much blending because I want the texture to really show through. In our last video, we talked about blending it out using flicking. Today, we're talking about adding texture with flicking. And this is a great technique for hair, but it's also a great technique for fur or anything you want to look streaky or textured. So I'm going to start with my E57. And my ink, you can see, is everywhere. It actually splashed on my picture just a little bit, but I can cover that up with ink later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be flicking towards that middle section that I was talking about where I'm going to create that halo. I'm going to flick all the way up to that, but not quite go to that middle section. You can see my flicks actually show, and that's what I want. I want to see those textures. I did that, and I'm going to turn my paper around because I'm better at flicking upward. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to leave some white in that gap. I want the white to show. See I'm flicking up and it's creating a little white section and that is going to be the, the little halo section and already you can see there is some hair texture because of all those flicks and now I'm just going to go in with my darker color and do the same thing but I'm not going to go quite up to that same spot. I am going to have my flicks just come up a little bit lower you can see, so now the E57 is showing through just slightly, and then the E59 is coming up close to that too, so you're getting that shading, and I've only put down two layers, but already you're getting good shading, and I'm going to do the same thing from this angle, go all the way up almost to the brown. So already with just two layers, I've got a really cute little section of hair. You can make it darker near the tips and near the hat by just adding a couple more flicks and just leaving the flicks even shorter than the last ones. And this builds up that color and it creates a little gradient. I'm going to do the same thing this way. And this, These flicks are going to be 
very, very small flicks. And there you go, simple, easy hair. We didn't do any blending. We just did our flicking technique instead of blending it. We started with our light color and built up the color with our darker color, and it was super easy. I'm going to do the same thing with the hair down here, but I'm gonna speed it up just so you guys can watch it. So there is the finished hair. As you can see, it's really easy. You don't have to do any blending. You can get a lot of color variation just with two markers. So this is a great technique. And I use this all the time when I'm coloring hair. And I just love that halo effect where you can see the shine in the hair. It makes the image look more natural. Over on the Marker Pop blog and my blog, I will have a finished card for you guys today using this cute little up, up bean. Be sure to check out the Marker Pop blog and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos. And I'll be back in two weeks with another Learning Copic with Marker Pop video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.